In this video, we're going to go over how we can add bootstrap elements, font awesome elements, import static images, and a favorite icon. All right, so our website doesn't have a lot of character to it, to say the least. Let's spice things up a bit and add some bootstrap elements. So there's really two ways you can get started with Bootstrap. You can go to bootstrap.com and download the full Bootstrap package and host all the files yourself. Or you can go to one of these CDN websites and they will host all the Bootstrap, CSS, as well as the JavaScript for you. And if you're wondering what CDN means, it stands for Content Delivery Network. These networks are fast, They've got data centers all around the world, so everything is optimized. So when your users go to download the CSS and JavaScript files, they get them very quickly, and it really helps with the page load time. And page load time is very important these days. Google will take a lot away from your rank if your page loads slowly. And when I say slowly, I'm talking about in the milliseconds. So it's always important to have these files hosted on a CDN, now you could host them yourself on something like AWS, S3 buckets, but we may as well just make use of one of these CDNs that host it for us and just copy and paste the code into our Django project. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm on bootstrapcdn.com if you want to come here and grab the code as well. I'm going to grab the complete CSS first and I'll go here and I want it in HTML format. And I'm going to go back into my code, and it's under my base HTML that I want to paste this. So I'll paste it here right underneath my title. And as you can see, it's just a link to the Bootstrap min CSS. And if you wanted to go here, I'll control click. And basically, it's all the CSS in one file. And if you're wondering what CSS is, I'm not really going to go over it. You can look it up, but basically it's what makes your web pages look pretty. The next one I'm going to grab is the JavaScript. And I will grab this here. And we will paste it into our base.html. So that's good. Now let's have a look at our website. And you can see it sort of just changed the font and the spacing so far. Our page is still really ugly. So let's go ahead and start using some of the bootstrap elements. So the first bootstrap element I'm going to work with here is called bootstrap cards. And you can go to getbootstrap.com. If you want to look at all the different ways you can configure these cards and have them look. I already have a template that I want to use, so I'm going to copy and paste it here. But if you want to use something different, just go on this website and find one that you like and then just copy it into your clipboard. So I'm just going to paste the template I have prepared into my code here. And I'm going to do it above all this other logic that we have. And this is just so we get a feel for how our page is going to look. So I'll go back here and refresh. And I can see my post title, my text body. So that looks pretty good. Let's make it so this actually reads. So now let's wrap our for loop around this so our actual posts go into this template. So I have this new bootstrap card and below it I have my for loop. So what I want to do here is I want to take this and put it in my for loop and then I want to move this post.body and place it here and then put this post.title and put it here and I don't need these h2 elements. And get rid of that. An indentation. So now our for loop is going around our bootstrap card. So now all our posts should look a bit better. So let's hop back in and refresh. 
And yes, we can see our three posts look a lot better. Now let's uh, get rid of this other stuff. Now let's get rid of this other code that we don't really need anymore. You can keep it in yours if you want. I just want to simplify my blog a little bit, so I'll take that out and back in, refresh, and our blog is looking quite a bit better, but we don't have a menu system or any way to navigate around, so I think that should be our next task. Let's look at how we can create a main menu. Okay, so I'm back into my code editor here, and I'm going to create a new template. So I'll go new file underneath my template folder, and I'm going to name this one topmenu.html. And I'm going to paste in some bootstrap code here. And you can find this in my GitHub, or you can find it on bootstrap.com and you can choose any of their top navigation bars. Um, I've also added a few things here. Um, you can see here that I'm using some font awesome icons, um, but I'll, I'll show that when I display the page. So we have this uh, top menu.html now, and all it is is a template for our main menu. Now we need to go into our base.html and include this file into it. So I'm going to go into our base HTML right now, and I want this menu to be at the very top of my page. So I'm going to put it right above my block content, and I'm going to do my curly brackets percent sign, and I'm going to say include, and I'll just give the file name of uh, the menu I just created. So we have that now. It matches our top menu.html. Let's go in and refresh our page. And we're getting an error. And it's uh, having a problem with finding static. I think I may have pasted too much code in. Let's go back to my top menu. And yes, I have this reference to something that I'm going to be showing later on in the video. So let me take that out. And I'll put it back in when our code is ready to use that particular tag. But now it should work. So I'll go back in and I will refresh. And I can see that I have a main menu now. But I have an image here that is not displaying correctly. So let's have a look at my code and see why that's not displaying correctly. So here's my image. And, oh, right, I took out my URL tag here, so that's, that's why it's not displaying. So that's what I'm going to show everyone next, is how to load static content. And this is the best way to load small files, like little images. If you're hosting your own CSS or JavaScript, you're going to want to use what we call the static directory. And this is very common for any web framework. It's no different in Django. So let's have a look at how we do that. I'm going to go over to my file structure here, and under website, I'm going to do a new folder, and I'm going to name it static. And then I'm also going to create another directory within the static folder, and I will name it website. And again, this is just a best practice that helps with uh, preventing name collisions down the line as your app grows very large. So we have that in there. Now let's put an image in there. So now I got a nice little logo in there now for the top of our blog. And now all I need to do is link to it in this image HTML. So I'll do that with some Jinja templating. And I'm going to use the static tag here. And then I will reference to the path of my static content. So within the static directory, it's website slash devops dot png. And I'll save it. And if I go in and refresh, we see we get an error here. And the error is it doesn't know what static is. So the very first thing you need to do when using static content at the top of your template, you should always go load load static 
and this preloads all your static content and then you can use the reference to it. So we have that now. Let's go in and refresh. And I'll hit F5 and I can see that my logo is now displaying. Now if you're following along and you're still having a broken image link, I would just make sure the path to your static content is correct. And if it is, I would also try restarting the Django development service. So just control C out of the server and then rerun it. I find that helps with uh, loading static content for the first time. All right, so one more thing that I like to also do for my pages is use Font Awesome. So I'm back on that Bootstrap CDN site and I'm gonna grab Font Awesome now and I will copy it into my clipboard and I'm gonna paste it into my base HTML up in the header and now we should be able to use Font Awesome and if I look at my main menu you can see that I'm already making use of some of the symbols so let's go in and refresh the page and when I refresh you can see that we have some icons here for home and features and pricing and again these uh, links are just the basic template links we can change these to whatever we want to and later on in the course we're definitely going to have something different than just features or pricing up there. And again, these uh, links are just the basic template links. We can change these to whatever we want to. And later on in the course, we're definitely going to have something different than just features or pricing up there. And just a little bit more about Font Awesome. It really is awesome. So you can see I have this YouTube icon here. They basically have an icon for everything. If I uh, move this out of the way and if we look at the code here, you can see it's just simple code and it's basically saying FA, FA dash YouTube. And if I change this to Twitter and refresh my page, you can see that it's a Twitter icon. So you got a lot of different options. And if you head on over to their website, you can get a full list of all the icons that you can use and we can search so if I just search for dev you can see that there is a literally thousands of icons that you can choose from so it's just a quick and easy way to get nice icons for your website and it really just kicks things up a notch so really really highly recommended to use for your personal website Another thing I like to do for all my sites is generate a favorite icon. So you can just Google a favorite icon generator and quickly make one. You can also make your own. I find doing something like this is pretty good and you get something professional looking. So I'm on faveicon.io, fave icon generator, and I basically just put in the text I want. So I'll say DevOps and I'll do a font size of 40 or so and now I can download it and and once it's downloaded it's in a zip file I'm gonna upload that to my static directory and now that I have it saved to my static folder let's go into base.html and let's put a link to it so I'm gonna copy and paste some code here and you can find this code on my GitHub if you want to copy the same. But basically, it's a link to the shortcut icon, and then the reference is right there. It's saying it's in the static directory under the website subfolder. And of course, since I'm using the static tag here, I need to I need to load my static files. So at the very top, I will put the tag load static and this should be enough let's go into our blog I'll pull this over and refresh and you can see that we have a favorite icon that's showing at the top left of our screen so I hope you found this video helpful and I hope your blog is looking a lot better than it did at the start I know mine is looking quite a bit better than what we started with in our next video, we're going to be going over user submitted forms. So we're going to finally be able to use a form to submit our own stories. 
It's a really important concept to understand when you're making a CRUD type of application like we're creating here. So I'm hoping everyone can join me for that. See you in the next video.